Hello and welcome to Faith with Flavor. Everyone is born with the desire to love and to be loved. We all want that person that quote unquote completes us. Well, our guest this week is going to give men all across the country helpful tips on how to win over the girl of your dreams. Chris Wolf is the author of 10 Ways to Win a Girl's Heart, a how-to guide, if you will, on how to captivate the heart of your dream girl. So get ready, men, because today this episode is for you. And woman, this episode will also give you some insight on what a good, godly man is looking for in his future wife. So stay tuned. But before we sit down with him, I recently traveled to Nashville to attend the National Religious Broadcasters Convention, and I got to hear a lot of stories of how different ministries are making an impact in today's world. One in particular came from Nicole Abyssinio, founder of Pure Power Ministries, which encourages single people to stay pure until marriage. Here's what she had to say. Thank you so much for tuning in to Faith with Flavor. I am so excited to be here with you today because I am at the NRB convention and I'm getting to meet all sorts of beautiful people. And one of them is Nicole Bassinio here with me. Nicole, thank you Hi, so much for so being here. It's so good to see you. Thank you for having yeah. me. This is an awesome God moment. Yes, amen. It was a divine appointment because what she has to share is really important. She's got a ministry known as Pure Power. Yes. Tell our audience a little bit about Pure Power and what it means. So pure power is just something that God ordained in my life. You know, he calls us all to be his disciples and to to do things in different ways for him. This is something that has been on my heart where he really wanted me to go out and and really teach the body of Christ how much he loves us and how we can love him back. And and really purity is so important. And and it's so important to just know how to live a pure life. You know, I stumbled through it and I didn't have anyone to talk to as I was trying to change my life and change my heart. And I just kept praying, you know, God, you know, please help me to do that. Yeah. And I think that's a struggle for a lot of our audience out there. You know, the Hispanic American community has one of the biggest teen pregnancy rates out there right now. So what you're doing is so special because it is so needed, Nicole. How does your ministry help people to become pure? Sure. So I've been counseling for sing, um, mostly singles and unmarried couples for okay. the past two years and helping them to live a, live in purity. And what I noticed uh, along the way is everyone had one of six things. Okay. And so it, it seemed to fall into these different categories, which was the first one, of course, is our identity in Christ how much God loves us, understanding that love, understanding who we are in Him. And that's that was a big problem for me. So yeah. especially as women, men too, I, I work with both both boys and girls, men and women, we all have these issues. Yeah. But it's very easy to fall into who the world wants us to be. Mm-hmm. And so if you can't immediately go to Scripture and immediately go to the Word and say, no, that's, that's not right, that doesn't feel right in my spirit, God says, I'm a masterpiece. Yeah. God says that, you know, that I'm this, that, that I'm made white as snow, that I'm forgiven for my sins, that, that I can live a new life. I think for me, you know, personally growing up, what really kept me pure was my vow to the Lord, you know, Mm -hmm. vows I believe are so important. And so when you said purity and you came up to me and you were talking about purity, I just thought it's an answer to prayer, you know, because it's that vow that you make to to God that is going to keep you pure. But for you, you're a Hispanic yourself, right? I am. What are you? I am. I'm half Spanish, half Spanish and half Polish, but my father is born in Mexico. My grandmother is actually from Spain, from Madrid. So that's so awesome. But how did you, uh, Nicole, keep yourself pure? in your teen years and growing up? Um, So I didn't. I didn't, and that's why I'm here to speak now. Mine came later. I actually wasn't even Christian as a teenager. Like, I believe, but I I didn't have that background. I didn't have a biblical background. Um, I didn't become a a believer until I was in my 20s. And that's why I developed this, because there's, the statistics are are very bad. It's literally 70% have already lost their purity, but it's not gone. You can get it back. And lastly, Nicole, I want you to just look into that camera right now and talk to, you know, maybe that that girl out there who is struggling with her purity right now, who wants to serve God, but she's finding it really hard every day to make that decision to say no to sin and yes to God. Would you just look into that camera and just encourage her right now? Yeah. So having been there myself, I'll just let you know that God loves you no matter what. 
There is nothing that you have ever done in your life that God will not forgive. You do not have to be ashamed. You are forgiven. You are washed in the blood and you are a new creation. You've put on that robe, that robe of royalty. You are a child of God, just like Rahab was. You are a child of God. She is in the bloodline of Jesus Christ. If a prostitute can be in the bloodline of Jesus Christ, you are in that bloodline. And the more that you're able to go and give this over to him, he will change your life. And I promise you, you don't have to listen to what people tell you. The more that you become um, who God wants you to be and pure, people will follow in that. The more other men will respect that. Boys will respect that. They're going to want to have a relationship with you. And the thing is, even if they're not living in purity, once you are, they will. Because you're going to be so strong and covered in the Holy Spirit that that's just going to be part of who you are and it's going to change not only you but the world and I, I promise you I promise you the Lord is smiling on you right now he's never left you he's never forsaken you if you just started tuning into the show what you just saw was an interview with Nicole Abyssinio founder of Pure Power a ministry dedicated to seeing young adults live out their passion for purity. Well, you guys, my very special guest this week is author and founder of the movement known as Good Guy Swag, Chris Wolf. Chris, thank you so thank much you for so being much, here Donna. with us. Thank you so much, Donna. And they, look at you. You look so <laughs> ladylike and classy and beautiful. And then I showed up in jeans and a no and worries, a shirt. No worries. <laughs> you know, you inspired me. Your book really, you know, talked about you being a gentleman. So it just kind of went together, you know. <laughs> and you probably thought I was going to show up with a bow tie on and everything. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah like just, the cover of your book, huh? <laughs> that's just a theme for the the website. In fact, actually, you know what? I'll I'll tell you what the 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 bow tie means. Just since. Okay, sure. It doesn't mean that I like to dress up. It actually <laughs> like signifies a connection of um, the mind, body, and soul of man with the other triangle of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So Aww. you bring them together and that's the bow tie on the site. That's so beautiful. Well, for our viewers out there who are not familiar with your ministry, why don't you give us a little background story on it? Yeah, well, uh, let me give you even a, a, a little bit more of a background, background story because I was really lucky when I was a freshman in college that I had, and I was awkward and skinny. We were just talking about her husband is huge, by the way. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen this before. <laughs> But I used to be really skinny as well. And so I was really lucky when I was a freshman to have these guys that I really looked up to. Mm -hmm. They took me underneath their wings. And literally within a, a year, like this was also the intersection of me accepting Jesus uh -huh. and then spending time with these godly men. And within a year, my life had transformed. And I, I mean, I, I, I was <laughs> I was bawling when they graduated. Aww. But I made a promise to God and I said, I will spend the rest of my life. My, like my, you've changed my life so much this year that I'm gonna spend the rest of my life giving back to young men. And so at that wow. point, I just started to just do men's ministry stuff. And I started mentoring uh, young, younger guys uh, when I was in college. And then I helped start a fraternity. And then, um, and it got really huge. And a bunch of guys from that fraternity continued to go into helping out with Campus Crusade and Young Life, which are two great ministries. And then, and then I moved out to LA and I just started a men's group with like a few young actors and it just started growing and growing and growing. And now we have this huge list of almost like 300 men and you know, we get together once a year and we do a big retreat and then we get together once a month and we usually bring in a pastor to come speak to us. That's so awesome. And you also are the author of 10 Ways to Win a Girl's Heart. What was your inspiration for writing that book? Well, a lot of it came from the men's ministry and a lot of guys, you know, cause I was really lucky, my wife, you know, she was Miss USA wow. and obviously she's well beyond <laughs> like who I am. So, you know, like she's so beautiful and, Aww. and I'm, I, <laughs> so they're like wondering, dude, Chris, how did you score Miss USA? And I was like, wow. I know she's, she's way out of my league, but I really just knew that this is like such a topic that's so strong for guys today. So I just focused on being a better man. And then I just talked about really how my personal growth and, and process really led to me being the man that she needed, which is really just a more godly man. Yes, and that's what every woman is looking for. And even in your book, you know, just by reading it, I could just tell you just sound like such a gentleman with everything that you say. But tell us, were you raised that way? Like, did, were you taught at a young age to, to be a gentleman? I think so. I think I, I, I'm really lucky I come from, you know, um, like a mom who really just cares, like she serves in the community. And so she just, even from like a very early age, I remember 
uh, her taking us to the soup kitchen. Mm -hmm. and, and we used to just go to the soup kitchen every single weekend. I, I absolutely hated it as a kid. But what's interesting is I love doing it now. That's and awesome. And so I think that's, those were the beginning seedlings of being a gentleman for me, which is really you know, the basis of being a gentleman anyway, yeah. which is just really to like serve people and, and to be like a leader to people as well. Definitely. Well, you know women love to be romanced, and for a lot of men, that might not come very naturally. What kind of advice could you give men to become more romantic? I think, you know what, here's the deal. If you're not romantic and you feel like you're having some issues with it, there's hope for you because each of us <laughs> has that ability within us. I think the main thing that we always struggle with is confidence and stuff, which is why I helped start that website, goodguyswag.com, which, by mm -hmm. the way, the book came kind of out of that because one of my first articles was 10 Ways to Win a Girl's Heart. Okay. But, but really, it's kind of just drawing that inner gentleman out, and it starts with just being confident in yourself mm -hmm. and also knowing who you are. And then uh, sometimes, too, you know, along the way, we all get rejected. We all get hurt by a girl here and there. But it's also about forgiveness and, and really respecting women, and you bring all that together, and I think that's just rom romance right there. Totally, definitely, and that's something that's so attractive to women. I mean, what woman doesn't want to be romance, right? But, okay, so let's get into your book a little bit. There's a, a quote that I really loved when you said that a quality girl, girl requires intention, which requires confidence. So tell me, Kristen, you know, what kind of characteristics did she have that told you that she was a quality girl? Well, first of all, I met her at church, which is always a great spot. That doesn't guarantee, by the way, <laughs> just because you meet a girl at church. True. That she's going to be the most amazing girl. But it's a, it, or but, guy. Or guy, for that matter, too. And I'm sure all of us are well aware of that. Yes. <laughs> but I, it was a really a great spot to not only meet her and then when I finally got a chance to get to know her, and I, you know, obviously she's so beautiful on the outside, but she's equally beautiful on the inside, if not more beautiful on the inside. Mm -hmm. And then when we went on our first date, you know, I remember she told me that she was, I just asked her a question. I just said, hey, do you think, do you think that if people knew that God had his absolute best plan for them, that they would save themselves for marriage? And she said, as a matter of fact, I do. And I'm save, I've been saving myself for my husband. Aww. And I just started crying. And I was like, here is this woman who, you know, she rose to be Miss USA. And mm -hmm. she probably had every temptation thrown her way. And yet she decided to stay strong. And she knew that God would take care of her. Wow. And right then I knew that she would not only make a great wife, but she would also be a great, great mother someday. That's so beautiful. Um, could you encourage like some of the women out there who are waiting, you know, for that man to come into their lives? Would, could you just encourage them for a second? Yeah. You know, I would just say that something my wife does, and she has a website too. It's called sheismore.com. And everything that she does is really built on encouraging women. And something that she wants women to know is that they have a royal inheritance, a royal identity in Jesus Christ. So if you're watching this right now, you have that royal inheritance. And when you know you are the best, then you're not going to settle for any less. And you know, when you know that God has his very best plan for you, then you're not gonna settle for anything. So I would just encourage all the women out there, don't settle and stay focused on your relationship with God. Be involved, but let the guys come pursue you. Make them come and pursue you. <laughs> Amen. That's such a good word. You know, a lot of men, they can be confident, but there's a, a fine line, right, between yeah. being confident and being cocky. How, how do we know that fine line? You know, I think that, that being confident and being cocky are two completely separate things. And I think it's really easy to drill down between the two because cockiness is an act. It's not real. It usually actually stems from the fact that there is no inner confidence. Mm. So they're going to put on this imagine, um, imaginatory confidence, if you will. Mm -hmm. But true confidence is just knowing your identity, knowing your self-worth, knowing whose you are, knowing your identity in Christ. And that means that you're not gonna let anything else sway you. And that also means that you're not going to put on an act. So they're two separate issues, in my opinion. Definitely, and you know, no one likes a cocky guy. I mean, women don't like that. But what about you? Did you ever struggle with being confident like you know you sound so confident in your book but did you ever have those struggles of course absolutely and i would just tell i would just encourage any guy that's out there that that look um you know confidence 
it, 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 it's, it's tough because we do once again have to know our identity in Jesus. And that all started when I became a Christian. And that mm -hmm. once again, that all started when I had some men pour into my life and who let me know that I was worth it. So once again, guys, I, I know I just like said that message to the women out there, but if you're watching, we're called to be kings and priests. Amen. So what kind of um, struggles did you have when you were younger? So I, first of all, when I was 16, I was six foot one and 132 pounds. So I was like a bean pole. My mom used to always make fun of me and tell me I had <laughs> chicken legs, you know? Oh no. And I would eat and eat and eat. And I could not put on weight for the life of me. Mm -hmm. And I was also bullied in high school. So it was mm -hmm. really difficult for me to have confidence um, because I was constantly being told by others that, that I wasn't worth it, that, that, you know. And how did you overcome that, Chris? You know, I, I, I think a, a lot of it came from the fact that, that, that when I accepted you, actually, you know what, I'll just be, let's just like bring it real. When I was 16, I, you know, I, I really lost a sense of my self-worth. And I was to a point, you know, when you hear so much in the media today about how these kids are, who are being bullied and, you know, even people are just telling, why don't you just kill yourself? And they go and kill yourself. So mm -hmm. I remember I was at home and I was alone. And, and I remember that, that it, it was New Year's Eve and, and my parents were out hanging out with their friends. My sister was hanging out with her friends. And I really just was sitting at home alone thinking nobody cared about me. Like, would it really matter mm. if I existed on this planet? And so I made a decision that night that I was going to kill myself. Mm. And I remember that I always kept my mom's keys in a bread basket um, or in a, in a basket over the bread box. And they weren't there that night. And I remember I was searching frantically all over the house. And it just ended up with me just crying on the kitchen floor. And, and, that, and even though I hadn't accept Jesus at that, accepted Jesus at that point, that was the first time that God really spoke to me. And he said, look, he's like, I have plans for you. I have plans Aww. for a hope and a future. And by this time next year, you'll have some friends. So. Aww. That's I don't so remember. I don't, did I answer your question or not? I think yeah, I just got yeah, caught totally up in the did. passion yeah. of that moment. But yeah, so you know when you struggled with you know being thin and wanting to be big and and all of that. But that's so beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing, and you know you've come a long way. And so we're going to take a look at how Chris Wolf asked the girl of his dreams to be his wife. Watch this. In 2013, Krista and I were hiking on this very trail I'm standing on and we got to the top. We encountered the most beautiful sunset. We were two months from getting married and I'm a pretty regular guy. I was married in Miss USA, the most beautiful girl I'd ever seen. And I asked her, what were the things that I did to win her heart? And this is important to me because when I was in high school, when I was younger, I was tall, gangly, skinny, I had acne, I was bullied, I had zero confidence in myself and I wanted to know what I did. I wanted to share this with, with other guys. So she started telling me and I wrote this list down and the next day I published this article called 10 Ways to Win a Girl's Heart. Within a few days, it had gone viral. It inspired me to start the website, goodguyswag.com, which really just ended up being a website comprised of articles about what I wish I would have known when I was 18. Through that, 12 million people came to the website. I couldn't believe it. And obviously there's a need. I noticed that the articles and the, the things that people gravitated most towards were about dating and relationships. So I took this initial article, 10 Ways to Win a Girl's Heart. For the past two years, I've been working on turning it into a book. When I was in college, I was lucky to have some amazing men start pouring into my life. I promised God that I would spend the rest of this life pouring into the next generation. Go to goodguyswag.com, look for 10 Ways to Win a Girl's Heart and I'd love to hear your story about how it's gonna change your life. If you just started tuning into the show, what you just saw was a video getting to know the movement known as Good Guy Swag. And sitting here with me is the founder, Chris Wolf. Chris, thank you so much for sharing that intimate moment, you know, of you asking your wife out to marry you on that mountaintop. Were you nervous when you asked her? <laughs> I was, I was. That mountaintop actually is a very special spot because 
that was also the first spot that I kissed her at. And so Aww. that night, you know, I had reservations for her and I, and, and I just kind of pretended that we had reservations over the hill. In reality, they were way back in the valley. <laughs> but I, we were heading there. I was like, you know what, we have a few minutes. Let, let's go to that first spot where we, where we kissed. And so we went up there and I had two buddies playing up there. One was taking pictures, Aww, one was taking a video. Oh, that's sweet. And, and that's, that's where, I, where I asked her. That's where I wrote a little poem and, um, and yeah. It Which was, was totally heart-wrenching. I mean, it was so romantic, your words and everything you said. I got a chance to see it, guys. <laughs> but um, you asked her out six months after you guys started dating. How did you know in that short amount of time that she was the one? That's a good. That's a good question. And of course, you know, I'd been dating so many, so many, you know, girls in the past, and and you know, I think I just always was like, oh man, maybe something will change, and, and maybe something in my heart will change, and I'll just be ready. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you what, when I met Kristen, she it was she was a treasure. You know, like mm -hmm. I knew that she was more precious than rubies, as Aww. it says in Proverbs thirty-one. Amen. And when you find a treasure, you don't let it go. And Aww. so in six months, I was ready. Chris, that's <laughs> so sweet. <laughs> okay, now another thing you talk about in your book that I think is very important is taking your thoughts captive. Why do you think this is so important in particular for men? Well, number one, us guys, we're so visual already. And it's really easy to get distracted. Um, I think that it doesn't matter what you believe in at this point, that there's enough evidence out there, even secular evidence that just shows that, that, that even you know, our thought processes obviously have an impact on our lives. And there's even a lot of research out there just show, showing that, that guys who you know, look up porn, that that actually even has a profound impact in their lives. And I know that, that, um, that, that it can impact their relationships and their future, it can impact um, just even the, their, their views of themselves and depression and stuff like that. So, in this world that we live in, it's really easy to forget that we also have an equally important spiritual world that's maybe even more important. And if we could be more focused on that spiritual world, mm -hmm. then and, and our mindset would be on that, then it would probably change a lot of the decisions that we make. Amen. I believe that for sure. Now, why are you glad that Kristen waited, you know, until marriage? Well, first of all, I think, you know, and just to be completely upfront and honest, that I that I didn't wait. And so, mm. um, and I thought too, you know, the fact that I was in my mid thirties, you know, I, I had just, I, in fact, it was so funny. I would be in discussions with some of my friends and they would be like, well, my requirement is going to be that she's a virgin. And that was never one of my requirements because wow. I knew that I had messed up. Mm. And so when, when, when I actually met Kristen and I, I, it came out of the blue when she told me this, I came so unexpectedly that I was just blown away by how good God is, you know? Mm. That God is such a good God. And even when you think that you don't deserve someone mm -hmm. or something, He actually brings it into your life. How have you seen God move, not just in your marriage, but in your ministry over the years since you decided to follow Him? Well, I think what's so cool is that some of, and it, um, I just was scrolling through Facebook the other day and saw one of my original Young Life kids because you know I became a Young Life leader after college. And to see that he actually is a Young Life leader now. You know, when we invest even in one person, that, that gives God the potential to, to use that one person to impact many people. And it's just such a viral, viral process. That's why the gospel's so good, you know? Definitely. So what is next for your ministry? I think what's next for my ministry is, is you know, I wanna continue forth and, and continue to mentor guys. And some of the, the things that, that, I'm tr that I've been trying to do through Good Guy Swag is obviously mentor guys online, but um, to really just set up more and more guys to enter that fold. So I've actually kind of been in discussion with some of the guys in my men's group and talking about how can we translate what we're doing in our men's group and, and give men even like across the nation who are, who are coming to the website an opportunity to be, to be mentored or to find mentors. Well, on that note, I want you to do me a favor and look into that camera for me and talk to that man that wants to win that girl's heart. Okay, I will do that. Thanks, Donna. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you're watching this show right now, I want you to know that, that obviously winning the girl's heart is probably your first priority. But, but the one thing that I would say is to spend some time and focus on God 
And a lot of times, too, in this world of distraction that we're in right now, it's really hard to do that. But just to take even five minutes, even if you took, you know, five to 30 minutes in the morning and just to, to spend some time in God's word and actually listening, God has something that he wants to tell you. And once you can be accom become accustomed to hearing God's voice, then he'll give you the words that you need to win the girl's heart when you finally meet her. But start with God first. Amen. Well said, Chris. Now, if someone would like to get in touch with you or, or would like more information on your ministry and your movement, where can they go? They can go to the website. They can contact me through the website, too. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you can, you know, of course, I have other social media as well. I have Instagram that you can go to Good Guy Swag or even Chris Wolf. And okay. you can you can message me there, Twitter. But 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 the website is a good place to, to, to find me. It's info at goodguyswag.com. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for thank being you, on the Donna. show with us. You know, you were so wonderful and your book was amazing. I read it all, guys, and I highly encourage you to go out there and get that book, 10 Ways to Win a Girl's Heart, written by our very own Chris Wolf here. And so um, any last words, anything else you'd like to encourage our viewers with? Well, I would just say, what, what did your husband do to win your heart? All the right things. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was just, you know, very gentle a gentle giant, really, you know, mm -hmm. he had a heart of gold. And I think, you know, every girl wants to be romance, like I said earlier in the show. And, and so I know there's so many girls out there watching right now that, you know, maybe you're waiting for that one. And I'm telling you that he's worth the wait. So keep waiting and trust God that he's going to bring the right guy to you. So thank you, Chris, for yeah. being here. And thank you so much for watching Faith with Flavor. Don't forget to email me and stay connected via my social media sites. If you have any comments or questions about the show today, I would love to hear them. Thank you so much. God bless you, and I pray you have a blessed week. Bye-bye. <laughs>